So that's why the jellyfish is important because once we start to understand that this basic structure is how our bodies function, absorbing nutrition, circulating it, excreting the waste products, then we can start to get more of a grip on the layers of our body. Welcome to episode three of What God Forgot to Tell Surgeons. So hopefully by this point you've got a rudimentary understanding of what chi is, as I have, and you are ready to learn a little bit more about what the channels are. So this is covering page 19 to 29 in the Uncharted Body, and it's all about the nature of the acupuncture channels, understanding the acupuncture channels. So the first thing is we need to reintroduce our good friend, and he'll become a good friend, the jellyfish. The jellyfish is a creature that I don't have an awful lot of love for. I mean, they tend to make me feel a bit panicky when I'm in the ocean, um, but they've been there a long, long time. They've been in the ocean now for hundreds of millions of years. And they're actually the most successful animal of all time. In fact, they're the most successful animal because all animals came from jellyfish. The comb jellyfish is the origin of all animal DNA. So in the spark in the machine, I talk about how we can understand how our body forms by looking at the embryology. And although that is a very useful way to understand how the body forms, it has its limitations. Primarily, the limitation is that everything is occurring at a very, very tiny scale. And so what that means is it's very difficult to observe what's going on. Now, another way of looking at how our body's formed is to look at the evolutionary background, or in other words, look at our primitive animal ancestors. And the ancestor that we're all from is from the jellyfish, so it's good to start there. So the jellyfish, composed of three layers. It's got an inside, an outside, and a middle. And we too are composed of, in a way, an inside, an outside, and a middle. And in fact, the layers that a jellyfish has on the inside and the outside are endoderm and ectoderm, and it's the same with us. So very simply, what a jellyfish does is take food into, the, into its stomach, which is surrounded by endoderm, and that absorbs the nutrition, and then it's diffuses through the middle layer and finally the waste products get excreted through the skin which is composed of ectoderm. Now what's happened is that as animals have become bigger they've created clever ways to get around the, the problems of getting nutrition further away from the stomach and that basically involved creating a heart that could pump fluid around. But the same principles apply in us as the jellyfish. We absorb uh, food, nutrition through the endoderm lining of our stomachs and then that gets circulated around the middle layers uh, and then finally it gets excreted. Now we excrete it through the bladder but the bladder is actually composed or, or formed by the ectoderm layer. Um, so this is still consistent with the jellyfish model. So that's why the jellyfish is important because once we start to understand that this basic structure is how our bodies function absorbing nutrition, circulating it, excreting the waste products, then we can start to get more of a grip on the layers of our body. And there are six layers within our body because that middle layer that is just a single layer in the jellyfish splits into four. Now we'll deal with that later. But we're, I wanna talk a little bit more about this jelly in the jellyfish because this becomes important to understanding uh, fascia and what the channels are. So the jelly is composed of collagen and water. Those are the primary ingredients in, in the jelly and jellyfish. And the collagen provides uh, some structural strength and allows the jelly to have a form. The water obviously is there to keep things hydrated. And then it also has some rudimentary muscle fibers as well, which allow the jellyfish to move. So our, the fascia within our bodies is also composed of pretty much the same thing. So it's it's got much more collagen in and much less water, which is why fascia is more dense and stronger 
and also sturdier than the jelly you find in jellyfish but it's basically the same structure as in the jellyfish and this fascia then permeates through everything within our body. It surrounds all the muscles and the organs and even the brain. It surrounds the brain in triplicate and it permeates into the organs where it provides the microscopic structural support of the body and this is formed by collagen and this is known as the Luo network within Chinese medicine. But the Zhuang network is what we're going to talk about today and the Zhuang network is the macroscopic fascia. So fascia, you can visualize fascia like silk, it almost, it, within the body fascia almost looks a bit like silk. It's a very strong thin material and it's surrounding and covering everything. And you can see it with your naked eye, it's very easy to see, in fact you can see it on pieces of meat. and what surgeons do when they operate is actually they actually look for this fascia and they don't look at breaking the fascia they look at moving along between the fascial planes so they if if the fascia is like that stuck together then they kind of open it up and cleave it open and then move down this fascial plane to where they want to get to and they to do that they use forceps like this they good surgeons they hardly ever cut actually good surgeons they're just constantly like cleaving open like this scissors fingers everything because they don't want to cut things because that damages it so they're just opening up these channels within the body and then they move through the channels so that's what the acupuncture channels are but that's why the jellyfish is important that's the true nature of the ring so the macroscopic channels are the fascial planes and you can see them here like, and this is why in all these illustrations within the book, the if you look carefully, the channels are actually drawn between structures. So they're almost always occurring between muscles. And when they go into the body, they also flow naturally through structures. So they're always flowing along planes within the body. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And uh, stay tuned, next week we're going to talk about the loi and also how the structure of the body within it is arranged within these six planes. And these six planes then become the six main acupuncture channels.